Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be doing a tool review of the Drill Master by Harbor Freight 80 piece rotary toolkit set. Okay, so welcome back to the channel. And if you're new to the channel, how about hitting that subscribe button so you get notified of any future videos I produce, whether it be tool reviews, tool repair, restoration videos, automotive repair, whatever they may be, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Anyway, so today we're doing a review of the Harbor Freight Drill Master 80-piece rotary toolkit set. Now, this is commonly called the mini rotary uh, toolkit set because they do have a larger rotary toolkit. But this is like the most common one. You see it on all their sales. You see it on their website all the time. This is the most common one. And uh, let me give you a closer look at it so you can see what we're working with here. And I already opened this. And the reason I did is because the first one that I got didn't work. It was DOA, dead out of the box. So I had a returned out one. And before I wasted time doing another video, I decided to test it, make sure it works. So this one does work. We can proceed. Anyway, so this is the 80-piece uh, rotary toolkit set. Like I said, the mini rotary toolkit. It you can get num um, item number six eight nine eight six nine seven six two six six three two three five or six three two nine two. It retails for nine ninety nine. And you can get it for $6.99 with a coupon online a lot of times. Or if there's no coupon at that time, you can always use the 20% off. Drill Master, you can still use the 20% off coupon. Uh, this, they generally claim that it's for cutting, grinding, polishing, sharpening, drilling, all sorts of great stuff like that, which a rotary tool is supposed to do. But in this case, I'm kind of thinking it's wishful thinking. I haven't done anything with it yet so we'll find out I'm keeping my mind open but just looking at it and considering it's only a ten dollar tool I'm thinking that's kind of wishful uh, it rotates at 16,000 rpms the let me pull it out of here for you so you can get a little better look at it the uh, length of the item is four and three quarter inches there you go. Four and three quarter inches. It is one and three eighths wide. It runs at 0.7 amps, so not even one amp. And it weighs 0.75 pounds, so three quarters of a pound. Yeah, it is very lightweight. And to give you a comparison, you can see it is it's smaller than my hand. And, and I'm, I, I don't have really big hands. I'm not a guy with really gigantic hands. So I have an, an average hand, and it's smaller than my hand fits right on the palm of my hand I mean I can make it disappear that's how small it is so um, 16,000 rpms like I said it's a single speed it just has an on off switch right there not a multi speed and um, honestly uh, I know you're only looking at it you can't feel it but in my hand I can say it is uh, it, it doesn't feel quality it feels rather cheaply made uh, this is a generic switch that they put on here it's not even custom made and for cost cutting, they have an external transformer. So you, the, the, this does not plug into the wall. The cord comes out, drill master right there. And uh, the transformer plugs into it right there, like that. So then you plug this into the wall. So they didn't even put the transformer inside of it. So this is probably just a little hobby motor inside here, 0.7 amps. That's uh, fairly weak. Anyway, so on their website, on the Harbor Freight website, they compare this to the professional woodworker brand, uh, item number 51832 at $22. And um, I'll put up an image for that so you can see what it is in case you're not familiar. But I don't know who does the Harbor Freight marketing comparison kind of thing, but the professional woodworker looks like a much better tool. I don't think it's a straight comparison to this. It looked like a better tool. If you put this one and that one side by side, I'd probably buy that one instead. The only reason I got this, let me clarify that as well. The only reason I got this is because I had one of my subscribers 
send me an email and ask me if I had any experience with this. Uh, he was thinking about getting it and wondered what I thought about it. I did not have any experience. I have not purchased this. I see it all the time on their sale ads and on the front page of their website. And it's a really cheapy tool. So I never bothered to get it. But since, you know, he wanted a review, I said, you know what? I'll buy one. I'll do a re review for you. And you can see it on my channel just like everybody else. And then you can decide if you really want to get it or not. So um, it's, you know, it's an 80 piece uh, kit. Brings all these different things in here. Let's open it up and find out what you get. How do I tear into this? Let's see. Get this out of here. Put that on there. What's the uh, best way? Um, I think, nope, we're gonna have to cut it. We'll just cut into it. see what do we have here well, they'll make it easy for you everything falls apart they don't make it easy for you hidden compartments on the back okay so I definitely tore that up real nice all right so here are the instructions which I would imagine is probably a whole lot of safety instructions if you want to read through it go right ahead there you go so this is what you get with it and it brings a little plastic case to keep all these things in it but It doesn't lock into place, doesn't have a positive detent. So, let's see here. These are all the little doodads you get with it, little drill bits and stuff. And all sorts of, you get uh, different collets and stuff on here. There you go. You get different collets, you get different sandpaper, you get different polishing. Put you up here so you can see this. And there you go. There's your thumbnail, right? No, no, that's not a good thumbnail. But there you go. That's what you get in the case. There's your tool right there. Uh, your whole kit right there. But anyway, for 10 bucks, this is what you get with your little case right there. And uh, then you got to figure out how to store all this because it doesn't bring any kind of a storage uh, case for it. So you keep it all loose or you got to figure out where to put it. But that's another story for another time. Anyway, so um, I looked online to see what other people have done as far as a review of this. And I was sadly disappointed that nobody actually did a review per se. Everybody looked at it, opened it up, said, hey, look at the tool I got. And that was the end of the video. And that's a little disappointing because it doesn't say anything about the tool itself. See, I do these reviews to help you guys out. You know, keep that in mind. I do this to help you guys. When I do a review, I make sure that it's a tool and I tell you at the end what it's good for, what it's not good for. Uh, is it worth buying? Is it not worth buying? Save your money or spend your money. That's basically my whole purpose of doing this. So I have no stake in the game. Harbor Freight doesn't give me any free tools and they probably never will because I tell it like it is. I tell the truth. I don't hold the punches. I don't hold back. Uh, if this is a bad tool, I'll tell you. So anyway... I decided uh, I'm going to put it through a few different tests and we're going to see how good it is. So let me get a few things put together. I'll be right back. Anyway, before I get set up to do some testing, I decided to give you a little bit of a comparison so you can understand the difference. I, I understand on the video it's a little hard to uh, visualize things. So I'm going to give you a little comparison here so you can understand what we're working with here. This is the drill master that I just got. This is a wizard... Uh, rotary tool, a battery operated one. You can see the battery right there. And I've had this for about 20 years. I've had this also for about 20 years. This is another uh, rotary tool by Black & Decker and it has uh, multiple speeds to it. Single speed, two speed, multiple speeds. 
and uh, you can look at it right there and see I've had these for many years they've been very good to me and this one is not very strong this one only runs about 13,000 uh, on one speed and 18,000 on the other speed so two speeds 3.6 volts this one is uh, three speeds and you can select in between it's a dial so you can dial it in in between it's not one two three it's selectable so it runs at 12,000, 24,000, and 30,000 RPMs. This one is 16. So this is sort of on the bottom end. About the same as this one. And you can see the size there. In this one, you can cancel out the battery, and you can see it's very similar. This is very weak. I admit that. I've had it for a long time. It's very weak. It's battery operated. I would not put it through to do heavy-duty jobs with this one. When I need something, some grinding, polishing, cutting, whatever that's heavy-duty, I go to this one. This is not for that. This is only good for small type places, portable use. So that gives you an idea how it compares to a real rotary tool. And one thing also, in case I didn't mention it previously, the professional woodworker one is a multi-speed. This is a single speed. So I don't know why Harbor Freight is comparing it to the professional woodworking one. A multi-speed tool versus a single speed, that's not a good comparison. So anyway, let's move on. Okay, so let's try some testing of some cutting. That's the most common thing I use um, the rotary tool for, and I'm sure you probably do too. So I took one of their little cutoff discs, and I put it on the appropriate, uh, um, I don't know what you call this, whatever. Oh, anyway, um, the I don't want to go into a huge explanation as to all the different things that the the kit comes with. So I'm going to put a graphic up on the screen showing you all the different things that it comes with in case you're curious. That way you can read through it at your leisure and see all the different things this comes with. So anyway, get the appropriate color, put it in there, and you slip the uh, mandrel, whatever that's called, I don't know. And you push down this little button to get the head to stop and then you tighten it up. And there you go. And that's how you get it nice and tightened it. Well that's not very good the disc just broke off me tugging on it that's not a very good disc is it whoa that is uh, rather poor let's see that's actually rather poor quality imagine if uh, I was cutting that with that and it were to fly off into a million pieces I could get hurt so that doesn't speak very highly of it let me get another one Maybe that one is just effective. Let's let's give it the benefit of the doubt. Let's uh, right out of the case. So you can see I'm not pulling something else out of there. There you go. Right out of the case. Let's uh, pull one out of here. What should we do? Any, meeny, miny, mo. Pick a random one. Right there. Right out of the middle. Let's pick that one up and see what it can do. There we are. Right here. Pick a random one and see what it can do. Put you back on there. Come on, get in there. There you go. Tighten it up. Now we're ready to go. Now let's see if this will tighten around it or do I need a different uh, size collet? Is it? Oh my God, will you look at this? Just messing with it. It just breaks apart, breaks apart in my hand. This is, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. This is really, really bad. Wow. And I, uh, yeah, I, I've used rotary tools before. I've used their cutting disc before. And I can tell you, I've never had this problem. Never. This is really, really bad. And that's all the cutting disc it comes with. It doesn't come with anything else. Let me just make sure the color is the right one. That's too small. That's too small. That's too small. Yeah, the one I got in there is the right one. And I really can't get it to tighten very well. So let's see. Let's give it another shot. And 
and you do have to tighten this or it'll just spin wildly. So I, I'm not even tightening it very strong. Uh, see if I don't touch it. Let me see what it'll do. Try to tighten this up. Get my grab in there. And I'm not going to touch it. I don't want it to break on me again. Let's, uh, let's try cutting a few different things. Like I said, these are the only cutting discs that it comes with it. So I don't have many to choose from. Let's try cutting a nail. See how it cuts metal. And it's very quiet. It's not noisy at all. Well, it was quiet when it had nothing in it. Now it's quite noisy and it vibrates a lot. So the head on it doesn't spin very evenly. That is annoying in the hand. I can tell you that right now. The other ones that I have spin much more evenly. So this is not properly balanced. That's one problem right there. So let's cut off this nail. Okay, I'm not even barely making a dent in it. Let me, uh, let me get something to hold it together. Hold up, be right back. Okay, so I set up the nail in my portable vise, and that way it is not going anywhere. It is secure, it's firm, and it won't vibrate in my hand, which can affect the cutting. I want to be fair about this, okay? I'm going to give it the best chance it can have. So this is solid on here. We can apply proper pressure. Let's see what it can do. Okay, I have to stop because the head is coming loose. The head is, it, it's, the, it's coming out of there. I'm going to tighten it with a pair, uh, with a vise, um, with a pair of pliers. Okay, let's tighten it this way and see what it can do. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That is not doing so hot, but I got to make sure it stays in there. And it feels like it wants to come apart, just tightening it with the vise, um, with the pliers. And I've used pliers to tighten up my other tools before. Sometimes it just doesn't, you know, it needs it. So let's move forward. I think I got it holding in there now. Let's see what it can do. It seems to get bogged down quite a bit. It's not really powering through it. In fact, look at that. I can stop it. If I press too hard, I can stop it. It bogs down. So you got to hold it lightly. You can't really put a lot of pressure on it. It isn't digging forever and it's not really cutting through. I mean, it's cutting, but my goodness, I'm about halfway through it. Taking all this time and only halfway through the nail. This is bad. Alright. 
I'm going to help it out here. We're done. We cut through it. It cut through the nail. But how long did it take to do that? That took a long, long time to do it. So, oh, wow. That is really slow. And it is rather warm. The tool is warm. And, and I wasn't even cupping it in my hand like that. I was holding it this way. And the motor is really heating up. So, let's move on to something else. Let me put this aside here. It's kind of hot. Let's move on to... Uh, Let's say cutting a piece of plastic. How about that? Let's try cutting a piece of plastic and see what we can do with this. Same cutting wheel. Let's cut plastic. It can even get bogged down with plastic. Wow, this is bad. This has no guts to it whatsoever. There we go. We cut through it. Wow. But honestly, that was bogging down big time. How about wood? You think it'll cut through wood? Uh, I really don't think so. But let's see what it can do. Cut a groove into it. That's about it. I doubt it'll go through. All right, so we put the grinding stone on here. Let's try to grind something. Try the plastic. It grinds into the plastic. Into the wood. It ground into the wood. Let's try the nail. How does it grind that? It's grinding the nail, but again, this is slipping out of here. It doesn't really hold the bits too well. You got to tighten it with a pair of pliers to get it to stay. So that's a problem right there. Okay, to give you a comparison of what a real rotary tool should behave like, I put the same cutting disc into my Black & Decker RTX, okay? And I have it set at the middle point from low to medium, which should be about 16,000 RPMs. So about the same RPMs that this one would do, I'm trying to be fair. But just to give you a comparison so you can get a better feel for what this machine can or cannot do. So, let's cut through the nail, which is what it had the hardest time with. Let's cut through the nail and see what this can do. So, I put this into collet, no problem. has a convenient little switch there. Tighten it up, and let's see what it can do. First of all, first of all, sounds totally different. Second of all, smooth in the hand. It's not vibrating in my hand like crazy, and I can guarantee you it's not going to get hot. So, let's, let's do this. done and we're done that tells you right there same rpms as this one and it cut it in no time and it's using their own disc look at how that fast that disc wore out using their own disc what a better machine can do with the crappy disc and same power 
So that goes to point out right there, in my opinion, uh, you, you can say it's a crappy tool. You can call it a tool, uh, toy. You can call it a toy. That's perfectly, pretty much what this would be. So I would say, let me give you an analysis here, and let's, let's try to be fair, and let's try to use a potential use for this. If you want to spend 10 bucks to get a few accessories, mind you, they're not very good quality accessories, but let's say that you need it in a pinch. You're hard up for money or something, and you want to get some quick accessories to do stuff with. Okay, 10 bucks, you bought yourself some accessories. Th call this a throwaway. Uh, if you want to use it for hobbies, crafts, stuff like that, if you want to use it for grinding or etching or molding plastic and glass and stuff like that, probably okay. It comes with different colors. You can use different things with it. Uh, like I said, these are not the best. Probably the best thing in here is probably these grinding things for grinding plastic and glass, not for anything else. But that's probably all I would say this for. It's a toy. It is poorly made. It is still hot. It's still hot. It has not cooled down yet. I've been doing all this in real time, okay? So, you know, I can tell you what everything is doing. It is very poor quality, very cheap. But, ooh, that nail is hot. But for six, seven dollars, what can you expect, really? It's not really that great a tool. I would say buy it for your hobbies. Buy it for your crafts, doing stuff like that. If you really need a proper Dremel tool, don't buy this. That's all I can say. Do not waste your money with a false expectation. It is not a proper Dremel tool. It makes a good engraving tool. Let's put it that way. If you don't have an engraver and you want to be able to engrave your name on different things and stuff or your logo, whatever you're going to do, that's a good tool. It's probably convenient in the hand. You can use it like a pen and you can engrave stuff with it. So that's a good way to go with this. A $7 engraver. That's not bad. That's a good way to go. So there you go. Hope you learned something from it. Hope you, you know, Learn what this can be used for, and don't waste your money on it if you have a different expectation. So, hope you enjoyed the video, and I uh, hope you hit that subscribe button and that bell so you get notified of any future videos I produce. So, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye for now.